Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'd like to read to you the letter I received from Dawn today for October 30th. Okay, i got to pull this forward. The very first um, word from the Lord is was given to Marsha Burns, and her little section is called Small Straws in a Soft Wind. Lift up your voice in praise, even in the midst of trouble. I will have compassion on you and will comfort your soul. Trust in me and do not be afraid. You have been in a spiritual desert, but I will be your oasis in a dry land. I will answer your prayers with mercy and favor. That's when you lift up your voice in praise, even in the midst of trouble. The, the, the uh, scripture put with that is Psalm 116. I'm going to check the camera really quick. Make sure it is still going. All right, Psalm 116, verses 1 through 5. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The pains of death surrounded me, and the pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. Yes, he is to those who follow him and obey him. He most certainly is. And if you repent, Turn from your wicked ways. Give your life completely over to Jesus. Commit fully to him. Love him above all else. And love your neighbor as yourself. That means everybody else. That will please him. And he will take pity on your soul. This one is one of those longer ones that come from a once in a while contributor. Alright. This is titled Reflect and repent. I had read this on Grafted in Team Jesus' channel and meant to share it. And I don't know why I didn't right then. Anyway, if I did and I forgot, well, please forgive my poor memory. I'm doing the best I can. I'm sharing it again. <laughs> but I don't think I did. It was given to heaven so far. Now, I've shared a couple messages or more from her, given to her. I believe it's, yeah. Because it says, it is time, daughter. <laughs> it's a her. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here it is. It is time, daughter. It is time. The time is finally here to gather my flock. Tell them. Be ready. It won't be much longer now. Yeshua. Then she received, or maybe before that, reflect and repent. Destruction is coming. Brace yourselves. I can no longer hold back my judgments and warn out of love. See, this part sounds real familiar, but I think I just read it. I don't think I shared it. So I'm going to continue. Destruction, the likes this world has never seen. Watch as the first domino falls. Like the sands through the hourglass of time, so are the days of your lives, children. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Where are your treasures stored? Are they here on earth, where moths corrode and thieves can steal? Or have you invested wisely in the things of my kingdom? Reflect on your lives one final time. How have you lived? Have you loved your neighbor as yourself? More importantly, do you love me, the Lord your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? 
what have you done with the gifts, and this person put talents in parentheses, I have given you? What have you done with the gifts I have given you? You know how they say, so-and-so is so gifted in singing. Or this person is gifted in art. Man, they can draw like crazy. And look at Akian. Uh, what's her last name? It starts with a K. She got visited by Jesus himself. Has She's a child prodigy in art, painting. Painted his portrait where the little boy that died at the age of three from appendicitis, his appendix busted. The parents thought he had the flu because the little girl, older sister, had the flu. You might know the story. Heaven is for real. All right, that's a true story. This little child went to heaven. He saw Jesus. And after he came back, to, he died, came back to life. He got well. They took him home. It was months before he started telling his dad, Dad, I saw he I went to heaven and I saw Jesus. I saw you praying for me in the room by the by where I was at when the doctors were working on me and things like that. Well, the, his dad started asking when they would go somewhere and see a picture of Jesus on the wall, and he would say, "Is that the is that Jesus? Oh, that's not Jesus, Dad. You know, he's just like four now." And they finally came across Akian's picture of, uh, what's it called? The Prince of Peace, I believe. Anyway, the, her first fantastic painting of Jesus. And he went, Dad, Dad, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. So I know that Jesus visited that child. And what is she doing now? Going around the world, painting all these Buddhists and Muslims and different religions and, and all being all, oh, let's all be one. And she's like the poster child for the one world religion. And I want to just smack her. Look what she has done with the talent God has given her. That is a gift. She is gifted in the arts. Moving on. What have you done with the gifts I have given you? Matthew 25, 14 through 30 was added in parentheses. My children, in these, your final hours, my wish is that you reflect on your lives. Right your wrongs with others. Repent for complacency and wasted time. Reflect and repent, children. That is what I ask of you one last time before your departure. And this is signed, Abba, Father. Scriptures given are Psalm 94, 11, Psalm 144, 4. I'll put them in the description box. Proverbs 13, 11, Ecclesiastes 1, 2 through 4, Matthew 6, 19 and 20, Mark 12, 30 and 31, Matthew 25, 14 through 30. And that's the end of her submission to this newsletter or prophecy letter whatever you want to call it. This next one, dated October 30th. I know it gives you pain. This is from the Lord. I firmly believe it. I know it gives you pain to see someone going through a hard time. Let it be a lesson to you. Even in your thoughts, hold no one in bondage through unforgiveness. When the unforgiving thought comes, dismiss it immediately. See, these, these are little instructions. A lot of these through Dawn's letters, these people are getting instructions or encouragement rather than prophecy. You get the difference? Okay, so if you get an unforgiving thought, dismiss it immediately. Repentance is good. I look on the hearts of my children. Satan loves unforgiveness. This is a way he does his dirty work. He keeps my people in bondage this way. I want blessings for you. 
Ephesians 4.32 is added. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. And that was given to Bev Robinson. Here's the last one and has to do with this weekend festivities. October 30th, 2021. Abstain from all idol worship. Every day is my day because I made each day. Some people idolize the Sabbath and it's wrong because that's what they had to do in the Old Testament. And they believe that the Ten Commandments still have to be kept word for word just like they are. But Jesus gave us two new commandments. They were mentioned in higher up in this letter. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. The rest of the New Testament expounds on what does that mean. How do I do that? All right, let me go on. Every day is my day because I made each day. My mercies are new every morning. But I call you to keep each day holy and sanctified. Close the door on the devil and his minions by not participating in idol worship. Any celebration that has evil intent should be ignored by my believers. You don't want to give the devil any opportunity. Just say no because the pressure to participate is great. This was added, Ephesians 4.27 from the NASB. And do not give the devil an opportunity. And that was received by Robin Robinson Bolin. Quite a timely word. Makes me wonder about Christmas. I know I was given a message about Christmas that Jesus loathes the paganism of it. And he told me to stop exchanging gifts. Why? Why would he tell me that when giving gifts is a love language to me? You know about the five love languages? Well, that, that's true. That our different personalities love to be loved in certain ways. I want hugs and affection and gifts. That tells me you love me. Other people want just accolades or to have something done for them. Clean the garage for me. The wife cleans the garage. The husband feels loved to the max. You see, because it's a chore he hates doing, but he loves a clean garage. These are love languages. And I love giving gifts more than I love receiving them. I love blessing people with money. As I am blessed and able, I love to give. So it was real, real hard for me to not go into debt, to buy as much as I could wrap them in the prettiest paper and bows and give them to my children. And when I, and I would exchange a gift with a family member or my siblings have an exchange every year. I told them this year I'm not doing it. It may be why I don't hear from God anymore because I did not obey. I bought a lot, lot less, but I still gave my kids something and exchanged with my siblings. I still did it. That's disobedience. And I have repented. And I said, Lord, if we are here, it won't be this year. I buy for my kids as they have a birthday or just because, just because I love you gift. But no more will I send a gift saying Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Look where we're at. Wouldn't that be kind of dumb right now? Who's going to have a Happy New Year? Seriously, if you're left behind. So anyway, I said all that to say. <sighs> Let 
the Lord, I guess the point I was trying to make was about the last message in here about Jesus does not want you to celebrate Halloween because the intentions of it are all evil. It was started as All, all Hallows Eve for the Day of the Dead, November the 1st and 2nd. It's a Catholic thing. The Catholicism brought it to the, as churches broke away, as groups broke away and formed first Lutherans, and then people broke away from them, and maybe the Catholic Church, they formed the Presbyterians, and then the Episcopalians, and on and on. But all of them still celebrate what the Catholic Church taught. Halloween, Christmas, even though Jesus wasn't born at Christmas. This is, and if we're still here, this is not me telling you, you can't celebrate the birth of Jesus with your family. He told me to stop giving gifts because I had to come into submission to him. He knew I wouldn't. He knew I was going to still buy them something. Socks. One year before last, woolly socks for the cold weather. And I don't think I gave, I don't think I sent them anything last year. But I did. My sibling, you see? So this year I told them, take my name off the list. I'm not exchanging with you. If we're still here, nobody's getting anything from me for a Christmas present. I'm not doing it. Anyway, I'm going to end this here. I've gone long enough. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us, our devices, our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I pray, I, I hope I see you in person any day now, brothers and sisters. I pray we're all found worthy to escape all these things that are to come upon the earth. How sad will that be? And to stand before the Son of Man as part of his bride. Or end time army if you're just a servant and a guest to the wedding. I don't know how all that is going to play out. I just know only a small portion. The Philadelphia Church. Revelation 3.10 um, I can't quote that yet, has to do with being kept from the hour of temptation that is to come upon the whole earth. Even though a lot of the wheat and the tares have been separated, there are a lot who have held out that will be tempted to take it. They'll be left behind. The Antichrist will come into power by taking over the world. In other words, he we know who he is, but the majority of the world does not. When he comes into power, he will mandate that thing. And those who do not escape to a safe haven or wherever God leads them will be taken to a FEMA camp, more likely than not, for re-education. And if they don't comply, they will be beheaded. Some people said, Walmart, I saw a video, they showed what they thought looked like gas chambers in Walmart. I didn't share it, but I don't know what it was. They, You know, it was one of those TikTok videos where someone that worked there said that Walmart changed like overnight. This one whole section was cleaned out. Walls were built, and there was some kind of gauge that you could see that would show. He said, well, what's in there? Is that a gas chamber? So it could be two ways. You could, But you know what? Death is sweet for the Christian. Beheading is quick. Even gassing is quick. Nothing is worth losing your soul over. If you find yourself left behind, don't you take that thing he makes everybody take. The thing you have to have to work in a lot of places now or to get on a plane, and you know what I mean. All right, with that I'll say, 
Bye for now. Talk to you later.